Hey everybody, I'm Heroic Nerd and welcome back. And I am sorry to say that today we are covering the final Tarantula comic. <sighs> Man. I mean, it ended pretty well last time. We had like a sort of nice bookend where he defeated the Tarantula priestess uh, in modern time and put an end to her cult once and for all, but... Now we have a little extra story, which is kind of nice, but here, just look, I'll just explain it. Here we go. It's called Night of the Living Gargoyle. Death stalks the tarantula with wings of stone. That creature, it's ripping the tarantula apart. Yes, it is, sir. Um, so I'm really fascinated by this because it seems almost like a side story. This gargoyle creature has never been mentioned before. I don't think we're going to get a clear ending to this. I think this is just maybe like extra content or whatever. But either way, I'm into it. So let's figure this out. A cold, damp mist envelops the main public library as a single hellbound soul wreaks warmth and refuge on its steps. But unlike a thousand similar nights before, on this occasion, the alcohol-doomed soul is not alone. No, on this night, it is the derelict fate to be the subject of an experiment more deadly than any other performed by man. Arise! Arise! Kill! 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 Oh my gosh. That's terrifying. It's a good horror villain. Evil Gargoyle, that's a classic. An experiment. A brilliant but desperate young Arab student hopes to prove his theory that mind over matter equals murder. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. Ah, but who mourns or even notices the brutal murder of a skid row drunk? As a rule, no one. No one save a certain Count Lycosa as he reads his morning paper. Still another killing. I wonder if... Crispin! You called, sir? Oh my god, you son of a bitch! You had Joseph replaced? How could you? You lost points with me, Tarantula. You fucking lost points with me. Who else could have called in this godforsaken self-imposed prison? Of course I called. There's no one here but the two of us. Have you seen the paper? No, sir, but I'll be glad to. It doesn't matter. I've done it again. Look at the small item. The one about that poor old man. I see, sir, but I can assure you. You can assure me of what? That the tarantula has killed again? Murdered yet another innocent victim? Yes, I'm certain you can. But you're wrong, sir. This time it couldn't have been you. You were in jail that night, just as my dear departed brother Joseph did so many times. I stayed up and kept watch over your bed. I did not doze even for a second. No, sir, it wasn't you. Thank God. When I read the story, I could have sworn I'd become the tarantula once more. Oh, so he's scared? He's scared of his transformations now? Why, Crispin, why must I bear this monstrous burden? Why did I have to be born Count Lugin Lacosa the Eleventh? Indeed, why was I born at all? You know the answer, sir, and I have no fear I have no sol solutions. Oh, yes, how well I know the answers, how well indeed. But now I, weary of their accursed consequences, never a day passes when I don't think back. Back to the days when the curse of the tarantula was first bestowed upon the original Count Lycosa. How well I remember the story passed down from generation to generation. That of the mysterious spider princess who led her band of murderous creatures against helpless villagers back in the Middle Ages, as recounted in Tarantula No. 1. Which we saw, it's two videos back, wink wink. My ancestors risked his life to lead his fellow men in a desperate attack against the mount monsters in an attempt to wipe them out. Little realizing the dire consequences his heroism would wreak upon not only himself, but all his male descendants. No, only when it was too late did he discover what he had done. You helped us destroy them, Count, so it is only befitting that you light the fire which will burn the witch who led the curse's monsters. I am honored. And I will accommodate your wishes, though I did no more, and displayed no more courage than you. A curse on you, Count Lycosa, and on the firstborn male of all your descendants. Your hands and theirs will be covered with blood from this day forward, and in the wretched end each of you shall die by his own hand, just as I now die by yours. 
All right, this is a retread. We know everything that happens. Today, these hundreds of years later, I am curious as to what my ancestor thought as he watched her die. If he considered there might be validity to her curse. Or if he forgot the curse and merely put it out of his mind for a period of time. Until the fateful day it finally was fulfilled. The day he first found himself transformed into the Tarantula. If you'll pardon me, sir, we've been over this hundreds of times, and the conclusion is always the same, that there is no conclusion at all. I know, Crispin. I know. But I must keep hoping. Please understand, I must. Somewhere, somehow, we must have overlooked something, some simple fact that could be our key. The key which could cure me of this curse! And I cannot, will not rest until I have found it, or died trying. But now, for a change of scenery, let us turn our vision to the shabby apartment of one Abdul Rashad, a poor university student. He's a university student, that's it? That doesn't make for a goddamn good villain, he hasn't even finished university? Arise, let the power of my mind enter you, and let it give life, for the secret to all life lies not within the body, but within the mind. And I now transfer that power from my brain into you. Take. Accept all that I will to you. The power of life is yours for the grasping. Can you not feel it? The power of my mind pulsating into your lifeless being. I implore you, I command you, take and be free of the bond of simple matter. Muhammad be praised. It is ended. The final test is completed and my battle is won. I have mastered the power of mind over matter. And now at long last vengeance will be mine. What the fuck is happening? He's making it move? He's making the thing dance using his mind. So he's a psychic? I don't understand, guys, and I don't think I can explain this. I don't think it ever shall be explained. Let's just accept it and move on. This is the final issue anyway. Are you certain you don't want me to drive you to the city? Of course, Crispin. If you stay up watching me all night, then you must sleep in the day. Don't worry, I'll be home before dark. Remember, I've never changed into the tarantula during daylight. I know that, but we know so little about the curse. What if you did change before dark? But the master is right. I must sleep sometime, if I possibly can. It's been three years since I first tra experienced my transformation into that creature from hell. And in that period, never once did it happen during daylight hours. So I must forget it for now, and concentrate on my business. As long as I get home before night, all will be well. Now I have to keep from letting my secretary know anything is troubling me. Good morning, Natalie. Morning, Mr. Lacosa. Did you have a safe trip? In this weather, I'd have been safer in a kamikaze than I was on the expressway. With whom is my first appointment? What is he? He never had a job before this. What is this shit? You're changing up the script, goddammit. Mr. Abdul Rashad, sir. Seems a bit young to need you, but he says he must see you. Fabulous. Nothing like a young millionaire to be to start a day. But see that we aren't disturbed. But you are disturbed, my darling. If only you knew why. What the fuck? What is he talking about? Abdul Rashad. I am... I know who you are, Count, and I am most pleased to meet you. Now that we have disposed of the formalities, let us get directly to business. Fine. If I might sit down, Will, there is no time for that. Let me make my point immediately. Before this day is ended, I intend to be wealthy, very wealthy, and I wish for you to transfer my funds to a Swiss bank account. That sounds good. But just how and where do you intend to accumulate this fortune in one mere day? And why have you chosen me to handle the matter for you? Silence, fool! It is for me to explain and for you to listen. My father is a client of yours. Two years ago, he disowned me. Today, I intend to take what is legally mined from his American bank account. And I intend to further humiliate him by having his own investment counselor help me dispose of his holdings. You must be insane. I have no intention of... Do not sell me short, sir. I assure you I am far from mad. Sit back calmly and I will prove the validity of my cause. Watch! See here. I haven't time for this nonsense. I have clients to speak with. Live. Live and the bestower of your life commands it. That's it. Yes. Yes. Now, my servant, kill. I order you to destroy this disbeliever. 
What the fuck? Wait, you're gonna kill him? Don't you need him? Also, he's the tarantula. I don't know if you know that. He probably doesn't know that. You don't pay attention. Do as I command, and you will continue to live. Disobey me, and once more you will become lifeless matter. Perfect. Perfect. Now, Count Lycosa, will you do as I ask, or will you die? Wait. I don't know what trick or magic this is, but with my life at stake, I am far too human to refuse negotiation. There is no time for negotiation, therefore I must fear you must die. Slay him! Or will you accept my business proposition? Decide quickly. Your time is running out. You leave me no choice. Call off that thing, and I will do as you instruct. Aha, I thought you would be reasonable. That is why you were spared my ally's initial thrust. And you have served your purpose. Live no more. What was that? Nothing to worry about, miss. Your employer was just showing me his armor while we were closing a business transaction, eh, Count? Several hours later... I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but you've been alone for hours now. So I thought I'd check to see if you needed anything, or... What's wrong, sir? What? Oh, no, everything's fine, Natalie. I'm just being coerced by some kind of strange Arabic magician. What time is it? Seems like I've put in a whole day already. You've had, and then some. You were right with him right through lunch, until late in the afternoon. It's nearly quitting time. Tell you what, why don't you come with home with me? I'll cook you dinner, and... Oh, Jesus Christ, take that offer, motherfucker. No, I can't. Possibly, I mean, I have an important engagement. More important than you. More important than dinner. Perhaps some other night, but not tonight. You go home. I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> tomorrow, my miniskirt. Always the same answer. Can't the fool see I'm in love with him? That I have been for months? I should quit. Start looking for a husband somewhere else. And I would, if I could even see anyone else. I hate to treat her that way, but I have no choice. She doesn't know that I turn into a monstrous, hideous spider at night. If only she knew how I really feel about her. But I can't think about that now. I can only think about the late hour, and what will happen if I don't get home before dark. If I become the tarantula again. Alright, we're speeding along here, so let's get to the climax. This is a huge amount of exposition. But fate is kind to Count Lycosa on this particular night, and he makes the long drive home without consequence, only to face the uncertainty of every passing moment of the dark hours. I tell you, Crispin, I'm going mad. What if I hadn't arrived back here in time? What if somewhere in the city or on the expressway? I understand your anxiety, sir, but the fact is it didn't happen. So why not drink this and then go to bed? All will seem better in the morning. Liquid will solve nothing, but something else might. I had Natalie buy this today, extra strength steel cables. I want you to bind me with it, Crispin, tonight and every night from now on. Then, fifteen minutes later, yes, this may be, at last, be the answer. Now, even if the transformation does take place, perhaps it won't be strong enough to break free. And if I'm not well, then at long last, dear Crispin, we can rest in peace. However, as the Count drifts into slumber, the fateful transformation once more begins, and at its completion, not even the strongest bond known to all mankind can hold back the hideous apparition known as the Tarantula. Well, on a darkened avenue, less than a block from Count Lycosa's office, open, open so your master may enter. Now what do you suppose that weirdo's up to? Probably just another nut from the village. Don't get edgy. Attack! He is our enemy. Attack him and snuff out his worthless life. What is he? Oh shit, it's the bars. He's using the bars to attack him. Well done, my faithful servants. Finish your tasks and return to your own state of lifelessness. I have no further need of you. There it is. The vault, holder of all that is rightfully mine. And now, at long last, I shall have it. Provided, of course, I am equal to the task of taking it. A problem which I shall immediately solve. Never before have I faced such a test, but I am eminently prepared for it. Now the moment of truth is at hand, I must summon forth all of my mental power, and force it to serve me now and forevermore. This is stupid. Why are you talking so much? 
Oh, matter is mind to control. Yeah, we know. Matter towards which I gesture, matter upon which I concentrate my energy. We know. We already know. Sense the waves which emanate from my mind. Obey them. Dissolve, I command you. Do my bidding or you will be destroyed along with me. For seconds which seem an eternity, why? Why do the seconds seem like an eternity? Of the battle between mind and matter continues until the mind seems the hopeless loser. It's no use, I have failed. Still, no more seconds pass into minutes when the young Arab finally musters his last ounce of strength. No, could it be? Am I hallucinating? Surely this is no trick my eyes are playing upon me. In defeat I have triumphed. The vault door is melting. Victory, vengeance, wealth. All were meant to be mine, and now they are. On this night, my father, your tyrannical domination of me is ended. Indeed, on this night, I am superior to you, you or any other mortal on earth. I thought this moment would be enough, but now I realize it is only the beginning. For with my power, I can control not only you, but the entire world. <sighs> now, in case you've forgotten who the star of this mag is, Jesus Christ, yes, let's go back to the good stick. I hunger, I crave the sweet nectar of human flesh, and by all that is unholy, I shall have it. Once more I must venture into the moonless night, and seek that which is the very essence of my being. I think you've said that twice. Stop, Count Lycosa. Stop or I will kill you in your human form. You ordered me to do so, and I will obey those orders. For not only for your sake and mine, but for the safety of all mankind. For who knows what terrible things you will do if left free to destroy everyone. You fool. Would you risk your life to obey the orders of a sniveling coward like Lycosa? Well then obey him. Shoot me. I will, I swear it. Don't come any closer. Bah! Spare me your threats, Crispin. You both know you serve two masters, and it is I who am the stronger of the two. Yes. You are right. I cannot kill you. Knowing you and my master, Count Lycosa, are one and the same. I am pleased that is your decision, Crispin. Now be gone with you. Let me be about my business, the business of life and death. And fear not, faithful servant. Your pitiful master will return to you within dawn's fresh light, provided my course, <laughs> my appetite has been fulfilled. Dear God! What can I, a mere mortal, do in the face of so unholy a terror as that? Yes. Yes. The Tarantula is so much more interesting than Abdul Rahad. This, this book should have just been about him. Mortals. Cowardly, useless beings. Good for not safe mind, sational appetite for flesh. And that appetite grows stronger. With each passing second, it must be fulfilled. But how? Where, of course? The city. And the girl. My miserable alter ego secretary, Natalie. Yes, she will be perfect. And now, let us move the hand of fate forward one hour to the small upper Manhattan apartment of Natalie Walters, secretary to Count Lycosa. Two months I've wasted on you without even reaching first base. There must be a key to you. But what? What? Who, who could that be at this hour? Oh, it'll probably be landlord trying to drive me down to my overdue rent. Stand aside, woman, and you will not be har- Oh, who is that? Oh, it's Rashad. Stand aside, woman, and you will not be harmed. What was his voice? That's not the right voice. Who fucking cares? He's, he sucks anyway. Mr. Rashad, what is this? This isn't Count Lycosa's office. You know I happen to live here. Well, I guess you might as well come on in, but let me tell you, if you wanted a date, all you had to do was ask. Oh my god, she's desperate. Be silent, woman. Tell me where he is. If he is not here, then where can I reach him? It is most urgent. If you mean the Count, this is the last place you would ever find him, unfortunately for me. He's very secretive, won't even give me his phone number. I have no time for jokes. Tell me where he is, or I shall twist your neck from its lovely body. Talk. Time is short, both mine and yours. Yes, this is it. I should have come here months ago, when I first discovered her address in Lycosa's files. But no matter, I am here, and she innocent, innocently awaits her fate at my hands. Or does she? My patience runs thin, woman. For the last time, where is Lycosa? And for the last time, I tell you I don't know. 
which you'll believe if you had brains under that turban. Oh shit, she got him. Not buying, huh? Okay, Swami. Here's where my karate lessons pay off. Come on, oil baron. Let me teach you a few tricks money can't buy. Like maybe a no expenses paid trip to your friendly neighborhood hospital. That's pretty cool. All right, she's cool again. I'm... <laughs> I mean... Anybody who beats up on this fucking loser... God, this guy's so fucking boring. I underestimated you. A costly mistake on my part. But not one so serious it cannot be redeemed. Wooden statue, obey my commands. Attack the girl. What kind of act is this? Ugh. Good. She is no longer an obstacle to me, but neither was she helpful. I must find Lycosa, and before the banks open, otherwise all I have accomplished will be for naught. Your time has come, woman. Prepare to meet your master. Allah! What manner of demon is this? Who are you? How dare you invade the private property of Tarantula? My, my mind, surely I have strained it. Surely no horror such as this can truly exist. The girl, what have you done to her? I swear she no longer breathes. No, I must not lose control, not now. My powers have overcome all of the obstacles. So shall they overcome this one. You are fortunate she lives. A quality you soon shall lack. Obey me. Come to life that you may crush the blood from my tormentor. What? You make inanimate objects attack me? I seem to remember, but there is no time I must act. There, surely you did not hope to defeat me with mere splinters. Yeah, motherfucker, you fucking suck. Throwing bookcases and shit at people. Come back when you have real villainy in your blood. Now I remember, this afternoon, you were in Lycosa's office. Somehow, you were able to bring a suit of armor to life, just as you made the bookcase fall on me. An admirable trick. One I should like to learn. Unfortunately, however, you haven't the time left to teach it. Do not be so certain, demon from hell. It is never too late to learn. Arise, craven. Image, move, live. Defeat our common enemy while I make good my escape. The statue, it breathes, even as we do. Indeed, and while it destroys you, I shall say farewell and pray you are no more than a figment of my exhausted brain. It is alive, and with the strength of ten men, squeezing the very life's breaths from my body. I know not what manner of madness confronts me, only that in a physical sense, it dwarves any foe I have ever faced. An adversary, perhaps too great to be overcome, even by the tarantula. I must maintain enough concentration to keep the statue living, and yet maintain my own presence of mind that I may escape. The strain is great, but I must succeed, I must. What an idiot. Air, cut off. Almost impossible to breathe. I cannot hold out for long. This being created of stone is far too powerful, even for me. This is boring. This is boring. This was nearly the end. Have to pull myself to safety. Will require all the strength I can to summon. Well, let me... <sighs> Fuck, I need water. <sighs> no more voices. This sucks. What is this? As quickly as it came to life, it crumbles at my feet. It can only mean that the man in the turban has somehow lost control of it. Which gives me the advantage I seek. So even one who controls inanimate matter with his mind cannot control his destiny. No, in my hunger for life I have lost command of my ally and perhaps brought about my own demise. Perhaps, and perhaps not, tell me, where are your mystic powers now? Why must you depend on me to save you or let you die? Why can you not summon nearby particles of matter to your rescue? Tell me quickly or I will let you fall to your own death below. If you will but spare me, I promise I will tell you my secret when I have recovered. Recovered? No, you will not recover. I have no real need of your secret. My only need is for your flesh. No! It is finished. 
Once more, the essence of my power. My very... Well, thank God, at least he's fucking dead. The, my power, my being has been fulfilled. Now return to the peaceful confines of my home. To once more hand count... Hand my body to Count Lycosa. If only I could. No, the sun is starting to rise. I've waited too long. I'm starting to change. But I can't. I can't, not before I've reached home. The girl, she may discover my secret. Three hours later. Holy shit, he's back? Wait, what about the fucking... What about the goddamn gargoyle? There was no gargoyle. That's alright, sir. Everything has been taken care of. Your secret is still safe after you left... As your other self, I followed, and I was able to spirit you from the girl's apartment before she regained consciousness. Then it happened again, and I can't remember anything. What are we going to do, Crispin? We can't go on this way. I know, sir, but at least the girl is safe. She'll wake up thinking she was robbed, that's all. Then I fear we must take each day as it comes, and hope that I can continue to prey on the wicked. That at least my soul may rest in peace. The end. Fuck. I mean, that was okay. That was very long-winded. It was really long. The pace is shit. There was a lot of dialogue and the story sucked. There was no gargoyle in it. He didn't confront the gargoyle. The villain kind of sucked. I liked the power, but he himself was kind of boring. I don't know. I just... This was not a good one. It wasn't a good end of the tarantula. Let's just take the one before this, Tarantula 2, and take that as the ending because it was a great ending. It was fantastic, but this one, not so much. It's like they just had to put out a third one just because they needed a third one. They needed a space or whatever, so they just whipped this thing together. It's clear that there wasn't a whole lot of thought or planning put into this issue, but anyway, that's it for this one. If you liked reading this one, I mean, who could like reading this one, but if you liked reading this one and you want to read more comics with me, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and donate to my Patreon so that I can do bigger projects. And as always, nerds, stay heroic.